What is up guys? Welcome to another video brought to you by The Simple Engineer. In today's video, we are going to understand the domain name system, also commonly referred to as DNS. Let's get right into it. Typically, when you open up your internet browser on your phone or laptop, you type in a website like google.com, and what happens is the homepage of Google loads to no surprise. Before something like this can even happen, we go through what is known as DNS resolution. And what happens here is the browser makes a request to something known as a DNS name server, and this server will respond with the unique IP address of the actual human readable name. It's from here that the browser can actually cache that IP address and make a request to the physical Google server to get the response, which in this case would load what is the google.com homepage. Now, the reason that we have DNS is because memorizing complex IP addresses that are constantly changing would be a nearly impossible task. Human readable domain names like Google or Facebook.com allow us to memorize vast amounts of websites with ease. So in this video, we're gonna understand the DNS resolution and mapping process, so let us just continue this flow. Again, starting from, in this case, the browser, what we do is we start the process by making a client request to essentially this domain. Now, before we reach out to the internet, the computer is going to check two layers of cache, and this is going to be the browser or operating system cache. Now, the reason we wanna do this is if we have made this request before, we can essentially short circuit the entire process of looking up the IP address because we've already done the heavy lifting. The IP address will be cached for a certain amount of time corresponding to the TTL or time to live before it expires and give you the IP address almost instantaneously. Now for the sake of this video, we are going to assume that there was a cache miss and continue the process of the DNS lookup. So what we do is we now continue to stage two, which is the client reaching out to what's known as the DNS resolver. Now DNS resolvers exist on the internet and typically hosted by something like your internet service provider. You can also reach out and configure to third-party DNS resolvers such as Google or Cloudflare, but in this case, we're just gonna use a simple ISP DNS resolver. Now, just like our browser or computer, what it's going to do is reach out into its cache and it's going to check what's known as the resolver cache to see if it's made a similar lookup in the past. Now the difference is, instead of just localized to your machine, it's going to take the aggregation of all queries for all people that have hit this server and look into the cache to see if it's ever been made before. Again, the cache is here to short circuit or speed up the query lookup process to resolve a domain name to an IP address. Now for the sake of this video, we are going to again assume a cache miss and continue the process to step number three. The DNS resolver is going to reach out and make a request to what's known as the root name servers. Now the root name servers are a collective of 13 different servers that are distributed globally around the entire planet. Now it's important to note that these servers also known as the A through M root servers, are managed by large corporate entities or academic institutions. These entities include NASA, the University of Southern California, we have VeriSign, the U.S. Department of Defense, and of course, ICANN. Now what happens is the DNS resolver reaches out to one of these root name servers at random. If one of them happened to go down, which is a very low probability, then we would reach out to one of these other name servers. In this case, what's going to happen is we're gonna reach out to the J name server and we're gonna ask it what the IP address is for google.com. Now, we're going to just assume that none of this information is cached to go through the end-to-end -end flow of resolving the IP address to domain name. The J root server will effectively say to the DNS resolver, I don't know exactly what that IP address is, 
but I think I know a guy that knows a guy that might know. So what the J root name server responds to the DNS resolver is an IP address to the .com TLD. Now the TLD name servers, which is the next step of the flow, is essentially a logical set of servers, again, distributed around the globe that correspond to the extensions that we use and see every day. These extensions are things like .com, .edu, and .org, and the list continues for almost thousands of other extensions that we see today, like .io, .biz, .gov, etc. So the DNS resolver gets the TLD or top level domain from the originating re request, google.com, and what it does is it propagates that query to the TLD name server for .com. Now, .com looks at this request and says, I don't know exactly the IP address for google.com, but I think I know somebody that can get you a little bit closer. And what the .com name server responds with is the IP address of what's known as an authoritative name server. Now, this is typically the last step of the flow, and that leads us to what's known as the authoritative name server. And the DNS resolver then takes this referral again and queries this IP address of the authoritative name server asking for the IP address of google.com. Now, finally, the authoritative name server will scan some zone files to find the mapping of the domain name to IP address and essentially return it back to the DNS resolver. This is going to be the actual IP address that's associated to google.com. It is then and only then can the DNS resolver fulfill the initial request of the client or browser to say here is the IP address of google.com, which is the physical thing used by the browser to then communicate to the google.com servers. So fast forward, getting rid of all this, we're kind of back at square one where the client wants to load google.com. But now we can actually do that because we have the exact address or IP of the server that we're trying to communicate with. So the client sends a request to what's known as the google.com servers, and the server is going to interpret the initial query. In this case, it's a query to load the files to load google.com. The server responds with a set of files to fulfill this request, and the browser will interpret it and then load what is essentially the home page, google.com. It's important to note one important aspect of this process, and what we're going to do is have a layer of cache to store the IP address mapping for the future. This cache will hold the mapping of google.com to this 172 IP address for a specific amount of time, also known as the TTL. So let's recap what we learned about DNS. DNS is the system that translates human readable domain names to IP addresses. Now, domain names are going to be the human readable thing like google.com, facebook.com, and the IP addresses are going to be the numerical representation of uniquely assigned values that locate a particular server. The way to remember this is that an IP address is essentially the business address of a company, and if you were to communicate to them, instead of sending a letter to Google headquarters, you would write the address of Google headquarters and get a response. That is how you can remember IP addresses. Now, the overall architecture of DNS simply explained once more is the client is going to initiate a request to load the website, google.com in this case. The request gets sent to what's known as a DNS recursive resolver, typically hosted by your ISP. If the IP address is not already cached on the server, it will reach out to one of 13 root name servers handled by one of those corporate entities that we looked at before. Again, if the cache is not there, the root name server will respond with the location of what's known as a TLD name server. The TLD or top level domain name servers correspond to the extensions like .com, 
.net or .edu, and it will respond with a referral to contact the final piece of the flow, and this is the authoritative name server. Once the request to the authoritative name server goes out, we get a response which is going to be the actual direct IP address mapping that was initially sent to requested by the recursive resolver. The recursive resolver will cache this lookup of the IP address and send it back to the client. And it is then and only then can the browser in the client actually send a request to the IP address of the server and get a response back into the actual client. So that's all we got today, guys. That's a simple overview for DNS, an extremely important part of cloud computing and networking. Thanks so much for watching. 